All right, we're continuing our series on end times and demons. Now, on end times and demons, the Bible says that we are not to be ignorant of his devices, Satan's devices. So we are to be aware what he's doing in the last days. The Bible also says that in the last days there shall be doctrines of devils deceiving the believers. So we got to be aware of these things. One of the doctrines of the devil that's spreading in the last days, we got to understand, is Lordship salvation. Amen. Now, Paul Washer, John MacArthur, there's no doubt in my mind after listening to their teachings, people might say that I'm misunderstanding, but I am not. I listen to them carefully on their issues, documented it, and they are teaching a wrong doctrine. Now, Ray Comfort, I put him in line with those people. Now, he's a very, very mild version of it, so I don't expound on him much. I only point out his problems when he tries to teach repentance using the general epistles. So in that sense, I have to address that and say it's wrong because it's pointing salvation to be something hard to do. Mm -hmm. However, I'm not surprised that because he is in bunch with Paul Washer and John MacArthur and he does do interviews with them, that eventually wrong doctrine is going to be seen even more. So I'm going to play uh, a vi video evidence here of Ray Comfort where he plainly teaches right here that it's actually doing works for salvation. Now, I know that he's not trying to because he's trying to focus on the issue of sin and repentance. But the problem with them, which I'm going to mention later and explain why, when you focus so much on that one, then it's going to show works for salvation. All right, so let me play it here. The judge can let you go just like that right. and do what's right and just because the fine is paid by another. Right. Well, God can let you go. He can let you live forever because of what happened on that cross. Jesus cried out, it is finished. In other words, the debt has been paid. Through his death and resurrection, you can be forgiven every sin. Your case can be dismissed. And God can grant you the gift of everlasting life. What you have to do is repent and trust in him who died for the sin of the world and rose again on the third day. Repent of all sins. Stop lusting, lying, stealing from your boss, playing the hypocrite, bad language. Let go of all sin. Trust in Christ alone. Does this make sense? Are you having sex out of marriage? Absolutely. Okay, that's called fornication. Absolutely. So add that to your sins. And the Bible says fornicators are not here in the kingdom of God. So you need to get right with God, marry the lady you love, and have children under God's smile, okay? Alright. You got a Bible? Okay. When's your last reading? Last month. Last month. When's your last read your stuff? So you'll notice at the most part, it sounded fine. Yeah. But then you'll notice what he told him to do as part of his salvation. I don't know if you caught it, but right then and there, why didn't he get him saved right then and there with the gospel? Exactly. Why did he tell him to do correct these sins first and even read the Bible? That's good. See, that's the problem right there. So that's why Ray Comfort, what he's teaching is pretty dangerous. I know that he doesn't mean to, but here's his problem. Because when you line up with Lordship Salvation and you teach general epistles that these deeds of works that these Christians are doing are part of the salvation process, this is the kind of stuff you're going to say. Ray Comfort didn't tell him to trust Christ right then and there and get him saved like that. What he told him to do was what? Stop fornicating, uh, stop doing these sins, and get to reading your Bible. Do we believe that's what you should do as part of your salvation? No, we certainly don't. We believe that, hey, you know, if you repent of your sins, then right here, right now, trust on the Lord Jesus Christ. What repentance does, it makes you put on faith for Jesus Christ for salvation. Repentance always does that. That's why repentance and faith always go hand in hand in the gospel. Let me explain. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. So first of all, let's explain this works process. What was Ray Comfort's problem right here? His problem was he told him to do the works first. That was his problem. He didn't get him to believe on Jesus Christ right then and there first. What he did was he told him to do these works first. He didn't get him to believe on Jesus Christ right then and there. Look at Ephesians chapter 2. We're going to look at verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. 
So it's not by works that you are saved. Amen. Now, Ray Comfort will claim that he does not believe that works is part of salvation. But here's the easy answer to that one. Why didn't he say that then in that video? Why didn't he tell them that? See, because he wants him to do those works. Because that individual he was talking to was admitting that he did all these sins. So because Ray Comfort was addressing repentance of sin so much, you see what his problem was? That's why this Lordship Salvation Doctrine is very important. It prioritizes repentance rather than on faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Repentance, what it does for salvation by faith is that it leads you to faith. Look at this. Look at 2 Corinthians 7. 2 Corinthians 7. Why is that, Pastor? Why, it's very easy. Because you, once you make the individual recognize that this is wicked, that this is sinful, he realizes, wow, these things are wicked. That's what God judges. That's what God damns me to hell. So I got to get rid of these sins. But he can't get rid of the sins by himself, can he? Who got rid of all the sins? Jesus Christ. Right. So see, that's what repentance does. What it does when you repent of sin, you recognize your wickedness that will land you straight to hell. And that's why you're going to run to the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ and say, hey, you got to save my soul. Right. And you put your faith on that. See, a lot of people, their problem with easy believism and lordship salvation is that easy believism and lordship salvation make this repentance as a sinner something hard to do. But no, it doesn't. It makes things more simple and makes it even more eye-opening, makes the heart more soft to put faith in Jesus Christ for salvation. Because when he realizes his sinful condition is going to land him straight to hell, he's going to run to the cross and say, oh God, save my soul from hell. See? Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. For godly sorrow worketh repentance. What does this do? To salvation not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. You see, that's what repentance does. Repentance is such an essential, necessary thing in the gospel because it leads you to salvation. That's why sin has to be addressed. Joel Osteen doesn't do that. All he tells them is that, you know, just believing on Jesus Christ, he doesn't preach against sin. So that's why Ray Comfort, Paul Washer, John MacArthur are disgusted with that. So because they're so disgusted with that, they focus so much on sin and sin and sin, and it causes them a wrong balance of doctrine. See, Satan, he will get you on both sides if you're not balanced in doctrine as a Christian. Amen. That's extremely important to understand. Look at Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. See, when he recognizes his sinful condition, you know what repentance includes? See, it's who you are, a sinner. So what they're focusing on is only all their bad works. But guess what? It's every work of you, including your good works. That's what you're repenting of. The Bible says all our righteousness are as filthy rags. You're repenting of who you are, a sinner. And you go, God, anything I do or anything I do can never do amount to hill of beans. So all I'm going to do is what? Trust in you. See, it makes faith so much stronger. Faith so much stronger. Let's look at Acts chapter 20. We're going to look at verse 21. The Bible says right here, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. It's very interesting that in this verse, see, repentance definitely goes along with faith. There's absolutely no doubt about it. It always goes hand in hand together. Because why put faith on Jesus Christ to get rid of your sins if you don't have the repentance, see, for your sins to get rid of to begin with? Yep. See, that's why they go hand in hand together. So that's why the gospel has become very dangerous nowadays with people with easy believism or lordship salvation. So you have to be very careful with that. You have to be very careful with that. 